And I remember from when I first started working in an office and I was very diligent. So I, when something went in my in-tray, I dealt with it straight away and my in-tray was empty and I got called into the office and they said, look, we just want to have a chat to you about your workload because, it, you know, it doesn't look like you're doing very much. Welcome. You're talking with uh, Jenny and Damien, and we are We Leadership. And today we're talking about managing employees uh, in a work from home world. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here with you, Jenny. And the dynamic change, obviously, COVID showed that we could do so many different things than we thought we could do. I mean, we've always had, well, not always, but for a long time have had the ability to do video conferencing. And it was always, oh, we've got to meet in person because it's better. And then COVID hit and we couldn't meet in person. So we all learned how to to frame ourselves in a in a video and, and present ourselves or turn the camera off and not do our hair. Um, I have that problem every day. Um, but now we've moved and I've noticed with a lot of organizations that we work with, um, coming out of COVID, people actually found working from home was quite an advent um advantageous to their life and their work-life balance and i know a number of organizations even tried to mandate you must come back into work and people just didn't do it <laughs> they just didn't go back to the office um and then that created a whole different way of leading because how do you lead people that you're not seeing there every day that you can't um you know watch over so to speak how do we create that that leadership what, what did you see in that regard jenny um for me, I saw leadership become a lot more hands-on mm. in the sense that you as a leader or for myself anyway, as a leader, I you know, had to become a lot more in tune with each individual member of staff that I'm managing or coordinating um, projects with and things like that. So it meant um, up-leveling communication to a to a point where I hadn't experienced before. I think for a lot of times there, I was on the phone all yeah. day, um, p- particularly in a in a lockdown kind of situation. And now that we've come out of that, and you've got people um, that are still working from home, I think a, a lot of that comes down to communication. Mm. How did that change from that perspective? Because I, I know there was always, and I put it in the busy work category, but it. I've always, and I remember from when I first started working in an office, and I was very diligent. So I, when something went in my in tray, I dealt with it straight away. And my in tray was empty, and I got called into the office, and they said, "Look, we just want to have a chat to you about your workload because it, you know it doesn't look like you're doing very much." And I was like, I was thinking. But every time you give me something, I'm getting it done and then feeling, you know, then doing other things as well. Uh, and they mentioned about, you know, there's not much in the intray. And then I went and I didn't say anything, but I clicked. And so after that, I said, no, I mean, I'm getting, I'm doing all this. But I walked out. I literally went to the waste paper bin, picked up a whole bunch of paper and put it in my intray and left that there. And that just sat there. And then when something came in, I still dealt with it still the same way, but it looked like my intro was so busy. And then also, too, I started walking around the office going, oh, my God, I'm so busy. Uh, <laughs> but and I just wonder from a leadership perspective, and, and I know I've dealt with a number of leadership leader leaders that would do this, where they needed to see people being busy as opposed to being productive. Um, and, and what I've seen or what I've encouraged certainly is Rather than be focused on whether the person is actually, you know, doing something, you know, nine to five, I'm there to nine to five, half the time you're out having coffee sort of thing, you know, <laughs> having a meeting, having a meeting with coffee. Um, it became more focused on the outcome 
as mm-hmm. going, okay, have we achieved? Here's a clear outcome we need to achieve. Have we and and rather than just going, are they working in that time? Sometimes people can do that really, really quickly. But the value add is um, the outcome achieved. They, they talk about that in the the, the book, the Toyota Way. Um, when you, if you're doing up the nut on a wheel, the 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 inch or whatever, if two centimeters for the metrics, um, doesn't add any value because that it's the last bit where you tighten the nut against the wheel. That's where the value is. And you want to try and reduce the time frame spent on all these non-value add tasks. But I found in this now, in this where you're not with someone all the time to see whether they're working, shifting the leadership style to be, okay, being very clear about the objective you want to, them to achieve because you're not there to watch whether they're doing it. But it, you can get regular reports as to the status of that as, you, as you're going forward. Yeah, I think that that's a really good point that shift um in focus and mm. um, then it, it becomes more project orientated mm. and you know you've got to be able to meet those deliverables and mm. i think that that's a good benchmark to to work from because how often and uh, you know you quite rightly you sort of said how many coffees you might have in a day or <laughs> that kind of thing but you know, to be fair, a lot of people just get so interrupted um, mm. in their work day that they hardly, they're not very productive anyway. Yeah. Not to mention if you're commuting. I mean, I, I used to live in Perth. The commute was, you know, half an hour. It was really easy. Mm. Now I look at people who are commuting from the Sunshine Coast into Brisbane or from the Gold Coast into into Brisbane, and I couldn't imagine, you know, having to add hours and hours to your day just to commute to an office where you get to do the same things you could do from home far more effectively um Mm -hmm. and without the level of interruption that you would get in an office (laughs) well that that's a very good point that you raised that that well two very good points one is the the commute was so the work-life balance has improved dramatically um by not being stuck on a train for or bus wherever for those hours which effectively redundant time um maybe that's not the right word but but also to what you're saying to the interruptions as well you don't get those interruptions so much the other side of that is and this is what i've noticed from the perspective of being outcome based is that you you need a whole different level of skills to be able to communicate clearly what that outcome is because you know if you're not um you could get a completely different deliverable that's not <laughs> relevant or, or what you're after. So it requires a completely different skill set in communication and clarification. It does. And um, I think this is where if you are simply task orientated, you could potentially lose people. So it does require more communication and more, you know, making t- time to connect with people, particularly if you have staff and invariably you will you'll have a, a mix of people who mm. are more the touchy-feely orientated, you know, you've got to be able to make that space and that time for them in that way. Otherwise, you're going to you're gonna lose people, you know, through that process. Um, but also how you measure that, you know, mm. so the task itself, but then how are you measuring that? Because if you think about it, at some point, you just being in the office was, part, was a measure. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it was. To show up. Uh, and now you're not there. How do we how do we qualify the work that you're doing? You know, and mm. the value that it has. Um, so that that's an interesting challenge. I know. Uh, well, during the lockdowns in particular, you know, we we had staff that obviously were working um, full time from home, mm. and uh, one of the initiatives we then brought in once we were back in the office is to then have a rotation. So we still mm-hmm. wanted staff in the office, but we allowed them to be on a rotation roster where they could work from home. Yeah. And I think eventually um, they they shut that down completely. So one of the things that that sort of brings up is, well, how do how does it affect people's morale? You know, mm. the, those shifts to say, okay, you can work from home 100% because mm. we need to and now everybody needs to be back in the office. What does that do for morale for people? You know, mm. what does that say about your leadership's ability to trust your staff and what they can do? Um, you know, there's no. some really interesting conversations in there. And I guess the other one that's that I'm curious about is how do people then switch off? Mm. If, their, if their office is now in their home, 
Yeah. Uh, how do they actually switch off and how do they get that work-life balance? Because that temptation to just jump in and, oh, I'll just do some work after dinner or, you know, I haven't even got out of my pyjamas yet and I'm I'm at the <laughs> office, you know. <laughs> yeah. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, that's an interesting point that you talk about is is having that shift and and the balance. And I know that's something that we focus on a lot is is creating that that balance and also the boundaries of, of being very clear about what's important for you. Because I think that's really brought that to the fore as well of of being clear about what's important for you. A lot of times we just do um, or we can do what is kind of expected without really thinking about, is this really right for me? And we've talked about this a lot where people, they, we talked about that, where, especially for women, where they'll go really hard for their career. Um, and this happens a lot. We know this happens a lot. Then they will decide to have a family. They'll have children and go, oh, wait, that really wasn't so important anymore. As much as it wasn't as important as important as I thought it was, I know even from my perspective that was the case. I mean, when I had um, my son, that became a priority, and there was areas where I just put things aside, career-wise, and things like that, because there was elements of his life that were more important to me um, than the career. And so I think that's really awakened people to to going well what what is really important to me and that's part of that the guidance that we work through is being clear about it from a company and from a personal perspective is what is really important to you and how do you balance the two between between your career and and what's your your personal life and where do they interwine where do you set that boundary and go okay after dinner maybe i'm going to do an hour's work but after that i'm i'm going to shut off or i'm going to take my child to school in the morning and start that little bit later just so I've got that quality time. And when a child's are captured, captured in the car with you, it's a great time to have a conversation. Yeah, <laughs> yes, no matter what their age, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. I find that all the time. It's been wonderful. From my perspective as a parent, you know, every time that my son's 14 now as we're having this conversation, but, you know, it, it, all throughout their life being captured in the car has been great for those conversations. <laughs> yeah. So, so this no doubt that there are some um, real challenges for leaders out there when it comes to this particular topic and how they manage staff around that. Yeah, definitely. And then part of that is being, one, firstly, as the leader, being clear about what it is that is your objective because that's from that if you have that understanding, you're also able to help the employees do that, but also creating that trust too about the, the work getting done because the work does need to be done as well. Yeah, the trust is a big one. And I think that we will see as technology develops and, um, you know, things continue to evolve out, you know, from COVID and, and beyond that, um, that that's going to continue to be a big topic. Yeah, exactly. Because I think people learned very quickly uh, when COVID started that when companies mandated that you had to be logged on, um, people did log on, then they went and did something else. <laughs> and they learned very quickly that wasn't working and we did a whole different dynamic as to how we interact and how we deliver and how we measure what we um exactly. the results yeah yeah so, so there are some uh interesting studies coming out of deloitte's um and a few others now looking at how this shift um in working style is going to sort of pan out over the next sort of let's let's call it a decade um, it is government after all. <laughs> and and what that's going to mean for people's careers, you know. And so I think that that conversation that you had around purpose and meaning and people really understanding what's important to them and why they're in and why they're doing what they're doing is going to become more of a um a focus. Yeah, and it's a really exciting space to be in. I think that there's so much opportunity there for both organizations and individuals to to grow together to create um, a wonderful dynamic where there's a, a, a mutual value add to each other, being able to work more flexibly from home, but same token be able to deliver um, consistent results and effective results for the organization, which you know has a wider impact to the community as well. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful chatting with you, Jenny. There's so much here on this topic. We'll, we'll no doubt have a lot of subsets about working from home and how to manage that as a leader. But this has been fun. Yeah, it's been great. Thank you. <laughs>